using an image as a drop cap. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So, you have seen these kind of drop caps in modern newspaper and magazines. Maybe you are bored of using the same drop caps in your every design project. What if you wish to use drop caps more creatively and are skilled at drawing and beautiful illustrations? Then you should definitely consider using image as a drop cap. Obviously, nothing comes easy. Even using an image as a drop cap has its own limitations in Adobe InDesign. It requires wrapping in Adobe InDesign. But no worries. I'm going to make wrapping simpler for you. Keep watching to find out. How to add image drop caps in Adobe InDesign. I'm going to use this InDesign file that I used earlier in my previous drop caps tutorial. You can download this file from the description. I'm not going to repeat the same process of creating drop caps in Adobe InDesign. If you are interested, then you should definitely check that tutorial. Link is also present in the description. In this text paragraph, I'm going to delete the first letter of this first word of this text. In this case, I'm going to delete the I letter from the InDesign. Now, you can replace this letter with an image that you want to use as a drop cap. Now, go to File and Place. Shortcut key is Ctrl D. Browse the image file that is supposed to be used as a drop cap. In my case, this file, beautifuleye.png. I would always recommend using PNG file because your page might be a colored page. Then JPEG drop cap will show up with a white background. I will explain that in a moment. Now, select this PNG file and import it in Adobe InDesign. You will see your cursor has changed its shape into load icon with a thumbnail of your chosen image. You can actually click anywhere on this page. Let's click over here above the text. See, the image has been imported. Now, you can change its size the way you want. I want it to cover the four lines. Let me select this image anchor points and resize it a little bit. Now, you need to open the text wrap panel. If you cannot find that panel anywhere in your interface, then go to window and then text wrap. Shortcut key is Ctrl Alt W. Now, this panel will open up on the right side of your workspace. Now, I'm not going into the details of explaining each and every button in the text wrap panel. I will explain the text wrap later in a separate tutorial. Now, select the drop cap image. Then, click on this third button at the middle. The one with the centered circle surrounded by the lines. It's called text around the object shape. See, the text changes arrangement along with the image. Let's resize it. Now, there is a problem. When you are resizing it, you are actually resizing the object shape rather than the bounding box. Let's click on this image. You see, there are two resizing options. One, the yellow anchor points indicate the size of the image. Two, these blue anchor points indicate the bounding box of the shape which contains the image. If I resize this yellow box, the image size changes. And if I resize this blue box, it is actually cropping the image. You see, this is how InDesign works. Let's undo this. To resize this along with the blue bounding box, you need to select this image by holding Ctrl and Shift. 
However, if you don't want to go through this tedious task, just select this image, then in the text wrap panel, choose this button. The centered rectangle surrounded by the group of lines. Now, even if you resize this box as much as you want, the image won't move from its place along with the text. Choice is yours. You can select whichever you are comfortable with. Now, if you don't want this text to be attached so close to this image, all you need to do is use these four options below. By default, you will get these values as zero inches. And all four of them are linked to each other. Which means that if I change the value of one input, then all the input values will change accordingly. However, you can unlink them anytime you want by simply clicking on this change button. As I increase these input values, there's a pale green box filling beyond the image. See, all the text around this image, right, left, top, bottom, are moving far away from the image. If I reduce the value, the text will come closer to the image. If I increase these values, the text will move away from the image. Now, if you don't want the bottom text to go away from the image, all you need to do is unlink them by simply clicking on this chain button. That's right, one inch on the top, left and right, and let the bottom input be zero inches. Can you see this effect? This is how it works. Anyways, I want to link all of them and set them to 1 inch. See, all the text spacing had been arranged accordingly. <music> Tip of the day. Like I told you earlier, never use JPEG file as a drop cap. I'll tell you why. Let's apply this master template to this page. See, this page color has been turned into pale green color. By the way, if you don't know how to create the master templates, then I had added the link down in the description. Now, what would happen if I import the JPEG drop cap image? Let's repeat the process again. Go to File and then Place. I am going to select this JPEG drop cap and then click on open. Let's click over here and wrap it from the text wrap panel. You see, the JPEG drop cap contains a white background, which is actually looking awful. However, if your page color is already white, then this drop cap won't be a problem. In the end, it's all up to you. If you want to use the drop cap with a white background, you are free to do that. One more thing that you should keep in mind, since it's a JPEG image, as you zoom in in Adobe InDesign, the image will be pixelated. Let's zoom in. You see, the image is actually pixelated. However, if I use the drop cap that I designed in my previous tutorial, then no matter how much you zoom in, the drop cap won't be pixelated. The letter will remain sharp. The best thing that you can do is using high resolution JPEG files for your JPEG drop cap images. There will be a slight pixelation, but not visible to the eyes when zoomed out. See how beautiful this page layout looks with image drop caps. Now I want you to use both drop cap methods with and without the image in your next InDesign project. If you get any problem, you can contact me javasumro1988 at gmail.com.
Follow my Facebook page over here. Jawad Sumro Production. Follow my Instagram page over here. Jawad Sumro Studios. I hope this tutorial helped you learn how to use images as a drop cap in Adobe InDesign. If you learned something amazingly new today, then subscribe my channel right now. If you enjoyed this tutorial, smash that like button and share it with your friends. If you don't want to miss any updates from my channel, make sure that you have clicked on notification bell icon. Now, I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye and take care.